Hello guys, thank you for joining us for another episode of Aggressive Intelligence. Today we'll be covering the story of Dr. Gladys Mae West, the inventor of GPS technology. So stick around to the very end so you can catch the full episode. If you depend on your GPS to get you to and from the places you go every day, you can thank American mathematician Gladys Mae West. She developed the satellite models that were eventually incorporated into the GPS that we use today. Gladys Mae West is best known for her contributions to the mathematical modeling of the shape of the Earth. Gladys is frequently referred to as one of history's hidden figures because she was one of many black women who made significant advances to science but were overlooked at the time due to their gender or race. Today, I will uncover her extraordinary work because it has been hidden for far too long. This is the story of Gladys Mae West. So let's sit back, relax, and get into it. Gladys Mae West was born on October 27, 1930 in Dinwiddie County, a remote area south of Richmond in Sutherland, Virginia. In a sharecropper community, her family was an African-American farming household. She worked on her family's small farm for a large portion of her early years. Her mother was a tobacco manufacturer. Her father was both a farmer and a railroad employee. Early on, Gladys determined that education would be her ticket out of working in tobacco fields or factories like the rest of her family. When Gladys was close to receiving her high school diploma, only money stood between her and her college education. Although her parents made an effort to save, there wasn't much money left over after paying for the family's needs on a sharecropper salary for Gladys' schooling. Gladys got a much needed scholarship to Virginia State College in 1948 after graduating as valedictorian she ultimately decided to study mathematics because it was challenging and a topic that was primarily pursued by men at her college. Gladys earned a Bachelor of Science in Statistics in 1952. She taught math and science for two years in Waverly, Virginia after finishing. After teaching math in racially segregated Virginia schools for a while, and applying for several government positions in the segregated state of Virginia that were instead given to white males, she later went back for a master's degree in the field, graduating in 1955. Gladys applied for many positions with the government and was offered a job at the Naval Proving Ground in Dahlgren, Virginia, now known as the Naval Surface Welfare Center. However, Gladys initially turned down the job due to its location and the requirement of an interview before being hired by the base in Dahlgren. She was worried that they would turn her down after the interview because of her race, but she also didn't have a vehicle and couldn't locate Dahlgren on a map. At the time, the Brown versus the Board of Education ruling was enforced and the Supreme Court declared in a landmark decision that American state statuses establishing racial segregation in public schools were unconstitutional. However, the Supreme Court did not specify which states needed to reestablish in accordance with the new decision, so Virginia remained segregated. This increased Gladys' anxiety about accepting the position in a remote area of a southern state. Being an unmarried black woman, Relocating to a rural neighborhood in a southern state heightened her fear because of the fact that various groups, including the Ku Klux Klan, were still at large. Gladys decided she was not going to let other people's ignorance stop her from following her plan. Fortunately, in 1956, the Naval Proving Ground at Dahlgren Base contacted her again and gave her the position without requiring an interview and offered to pay her twice as much as her present teaching position because their positions was not being filled. It was unusual for a black woman at the time 
to be hired solely on the basis of her qualifications and to receive a salary that would ultimately enable her to support her family. Gladys was one of only four black workers and the second black woman to be recruited. She was a project manager for the data processing systems used in the study of satellite data and a programmer for large-scale computers in the Naval Surface Welfare Center Dahlgren Division. Gladys also earned a second master's degree in public administration at the same time. On the Dahlgren base, Gladys connected with Ira V. West, another black mathematician. Gladys and Ira married in 1957 and had three children, Michael, David, and Carolyn. At this time, the civil rights movement was also at its height. Despite her support for the movement, she was unable to take part in demonstrations because she worked for the government. She was a member of a group of black women who discussed issues pertaining to civil rights in Boomtown, where married people resided on the base. She faced many challenges throughout her career as a result of racism toward African Americans, the most significant of which was the lack of recognition she received at work while her white colleagues were praised and given additional privileges. On the other hand, Gladys was respected at Dahlgren for being able to manually solve difficult mathematical equations. She ultimately switched from manually solving those equations to creating computer programs to do it for her. Her first significant project at Dahlgren started with the Naval Ordnance Research Calculator, or NORC, after receiving some computer programming training. Gladys contributed to the programming of the NORC for Project 29V in 1962, which used 5 billion arithmetic computations and 100 hours of computer time to determine the motion of Pluto relative to Neptune. Gladys then concentrated on making computations for satellite orbits. In 1978, Gladys West was appointed project manager of CSET, a U.S. ocean surveillance satellite that was still in its early stages of development and was intended to provide information on a wide range of oceanographic features and conditions such as wave height, water temperature, currents, winds, icebergs, and coastal characteristics. It was the initial effort to show how satellites could be used to gather important oceanographic information. GeoSat, a spacecraft designed to produce digital models of the Earth's surface, was created as a result of Gladys' work on CSAT. Gladys and her team developed a program that could accurately determine the orbits of satellites by teaching a computer to take into account gravity, tides, and other forces that operate on the surface of the Earth. These calculations allow for the creation of a geoid model, which represents the precise shape of the Earth. The GPS system can calculate an exact location anywhere on Earth thanks to this model and subsequent updates. Gladys's model served as the foundation for the Global Positioning System, or GPS, we use today. A 51-page technical report from the Naval Surface Weapons Center was released in 1986 by Gladys under the title Data Processing System Specifications for the Geosat Satellite Radar Altimeter. The manual was created to outline the best practices for improving the determination of geoid heights and vertical deflection, two crucial elements of satellite geodesy. This was accomplished by analyzing the data gathered by the GeoSat Satellite's radio altimeter, which was launched into orbit on March 12, 1985. Gladys spent 42 years working for Dahlgren before resigning in 1998 at the age of 68. She earned a doctorate in public administration from Virginia Tech in 2000 at the age of 70 after retiring and recovering from a stroke. 
The Virginia General Assembly recognized Gladys officially in 2018 for her role in the creation of GPS. She was also admitted into the Air Force Space and Missile Pioneers Hall of Fame in the same year. Gladys Mae West continues to talk to elementary school students in King George County, Virginia about the value of pursuing science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's all for Aggressive Intelligence. I hope you enjoyed the story on Dr. Gladys Mae West. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you on the next one.